Hello and welcome to <clears throat> today's edition of Empowerment Hour here at Callan FM. I'm Denise Oliver <clears throat> and today I'm talking about pets and um, the value of having a pet during stressful times, uh, if you have anxiety, um, you're feeling stressed for other reasons than what we're going through at the moment and to anyone who's in a firebreaker lockdown stay safe do what works for you and um, let's see if we can't rid ourselves of this coronavirus threat the anxiety it causes sooner rather than later yeah, today's show we're going to be talking about pets and their benefits and uh, in particular the one that we now have living with us um, who is called Jessie and Jessie is a dog. She is a terrier of some sort. We don't know her history. She's about two years old. That's all we know about her from that point of view. Um, she came from Romania. She's a rescue dog and she's absolutely delightful. She's gorgeous. And she comes with her own behavior issues. So she obviously came to us in a very stressed um, and upset way. She'd been traveling for days. She was scared of us. She didn't know where she was. Obviously, everything was different. The things she saw, the things she could smell, what she was hearing. So in today's show, I'm going to be talking more about Jessie and what we're doing about her anxiety and um, how when we're with her, certainly from my point of view, how I relate to her, how I spend my time with her and um, not just me, the rest of the family. And I'm sure those of you who have pets will understand some of the things that I'm going to be talking about today, the benefits of having them, but also there is a downside to having them. Uh, and yeah, we can talk all about pets today. So stay tuned. Um, and as with most of this year's um, shows, they are recorded via the Zoom, Zoom platform. And this is the first show I've done in several weeks. Um, reasons various, but let's stick with the one that we're going to talk about today. The pet that we've um, uh, that we've invited into her, into our home. I was going to say that we bought, and we have bought her, we have paid for her. Um, but yeah, she's very much been welcomed in. She's been invited in as this um, wonderful creature that she is. So um, stay tuned. We're going to talk more. And um, yeah, I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whether you're in a, a lockdown firebreaker or not, that you are staying safe and well. Hi there and welcome back to today's edition of Empowerment Hour here at Callan FM and today I'm talking all about pets and how they can help us with our anxiety, um, our sense of well-being and there's a lot of research out there now about pets and um, the benefits of having a pet. Um, and especially in times like this, when uh, we can find ourselves back in our homes and um, yeah, they give us that reason to go out for a walk every day. It gets us going and they bring to us as well as us to them a feel good factor when we have that relationship with them that works. Because we haven't had a dog uh, for a long, long time now in this house. And this dog that we have, Jessie, this terrier, gorgeous. She's absolutely amazing. She's got the most beautiful ears that stand up to a really high point, but then the ends flop over as well. Oh, she's so cute. And occasionally she looks a lot like Dobby from the films, the Harry Potter films. Um, she's just got this sort of face that looks a bit sad and her ears go down. She's the cutest thing. And she's come to us with her behavioral issues partly because she's been taken out of her own country. She was abandoned. She was abandoned on a farm in Romania and very quickly from the farm to being, um, to traveling to us, 
she um, it's been about six weeks for her. So we've had her about four weeks now. And she's been one of the biggest distractions from me getting any work done than I've had in a long, long time. But that's partly because we're training her to live with us and we're learning. So we need training as well. We're learning to live with her. So how are we doing that? Well, my daughter, whose dog she is fully, um, my daughter lives with us at the moment. So Jessie was her birthday present in September. There was an awful lot to sort out before we could actually get Jessie. Um, and Evie wanted dog training that was of positive reinforcement. And so she found the Institute of Modern Dog Trainers on uh, online. And um, a local young woman called Megan comes to see us once a week or once a fortnight. And they call themselves dog behaviorists. So they're coming to meet these dogs and uh, Megan's well aware of the behavior of a dog who has been rescued, whether they've been rescued in this country or from abroad. Basically, they're full of stress. They're scared. They don't know that you're their owner at the moment. They just don't know whether you're going to look after them briefly or forever. They don't know that. And so she's teaching us how to keep her calm, which actually keeps us calm as well. It has this wonderful win-win effect. We're very lucky with Jessie in that she's very food oriented. So tiny, tiny bits of treats work really well in, um, in getting her to respond to commands like sit, lay down, she waits beautifully now for her food to be put on the floor. You know, she has these wonderful licky mats and licky bowls. So it takes her time to get her food inside her rather than it being gulped down. And again, apparently that gulping of food with a dog can be a stress response. Um, Megan, the dog behaviorist that Evie's found, um, reckons that she's been part of a pack. And so she gulps the food in order to make sure she gets enough um, rather than lose out to the rest of the pack. And then with a licky bowl, a licky mat, she can take her time and we leave her. Once the food goes down, we leave her and just let her do what she needs to yeah. do. So, yeah, so she's started to respond beautifully to that it's not a command to wait because Megan's taught us that what we require from her is to know that the word wait is if there's danger, like say she goes too close to the road. And so we've stopped saying wait. And what we use is ah, ah <laughs> which isn't a word or anything. It's just sounds. And she really responds well to ah, ah I don't touch, don't move. Um, I want you to sit there, you wait, and on my command to go forward to your bowl, great, rather than her jumping up at us and trying to snatch the bowl of food out of our hands. And she's responding so well to things like that. Um, she's, I'm sure you can hear it in my voice, but she's an absolute delight. She really is. Not without her challenges, of course, and um, which dog doesn't have them in some way, shape or form. So I'll come back after this next song and we'll look at what else we can do with Jessie, with other dogs and um, the benefits of actually having a dog as well or any pet for that matter. So stay tuned. This is uh, me, Denise Oliver. This is Empowerment Hour here at Callan FM. Hi there. Welcome back. Um, this is Empowerment Hour. I'm Denise Oliver. And today I'm looking at pets and their, their capacity to help us with our stress and overwhelm. And in a time like we're in and have been for most of this year with COVID, uh, this strange in lockdown, partial lockdown, no lockdown, back to lockdown situation we're in, um, our animals can be such a wonderful presence in our world. Now we have Jessie who has come to us from Romania. This is her 
fourth stroke fifth week I'm beginning to, to forget now um, and she's had her issues and we're working with her but actually when when we're all with her and we're having fun with her I can totally see how everyone in the family just smiles so much more she looks at you she wags her tail she waits for you to tickle her tummy and there's something about that that is just lovely it's the presence of having this dog who is a companion um, research shows that dogs that you have that you have a great relationship with and you can build a relationship with a dog um, through training them and you <laughs> it works both ways um, yes, they they assist us in our stress relief um, and not just dogs, other pets too, cats, um, all sorts of animals. Um, it's the reason why a lot of doctors and dentist surgeries have fish tanks so that you watch the slow rhythmic movement of fish and it calms you down. It changes your stress hormones and um, other things that are really great about dogs in particular, I'm focusing on because we have Jessie. Uh, a friend of mine, Sarah, who's now in New Zealand, she had her dog, Benji, and she used to take him into work. And Sarah worked with dementia clients and um, the taking Benji in and allowing him to be patted and petted brought such um, a joy to the people who were um, in the dementia unit that she worked with. Now, it didn't do an awful lot for Benji's waistline because he used to get fed biscuits and everything like that. So he was a happy doggy. Um, and all the patients that were part of the unit really got something out of it. And it's partly to do with something called the oxytonin uh, release. And mothers, uh, when they've given birth to their babies, experience that oxytonin high. But time spent with your dog and having fun with um, your dog, your pet, which whatever you've got, really can do that for you too. It takes about 30 minutes of having this um, togetherness with this animal. And um, you really do find yourself in a zone of just like, wow, this is just so lovely. We don't yet, with our dog, Jessie, we don't yet get cuddles She's obviously a dog that's never been used to being a lap dog. She likes her space. She loves to be stroked, but it's part of a game at the moment. And so as we gain her trust, she comes to us more. And um, with me, she goes to each person differently. With me, she comes to me and she puts her head against my leg, my lower leg. And what she wants is for me to just gently stroke her um, just behind her front legs she doesn't sit down for me with my daughter she fully lays on the ground and likes her whole belly rubbed um, and she's just different with everyone one of the things we are working with with her which is fun for us as well is um, the playtime that we're having with her she has a short attention span and again, going back to Megan, the um, behaviorist stroke, stroke trainer, she thinks that she's possibly like lived in a yard where she's been on guard all the time, but very territorial, having to pace a lot. Uh, because when it comes to gaining her attention, it's taken us a while to get there with her. But it's four weeks and she's changed so much in that time. We can't yet take her on long walks. So what we what has to happen on a lead is that we allow her to show us where she's comfortable and she gets a lot of tiny bits of treat for that um, when she doesn't run in the road, when she stops and doesn't bark at someone. She's learning through being rewarded that that's the behaviour that we're looking for. So the training of her and does is ongoing so we sort of think about getting a dog and think yes right we'll go off for an hour's walk or a hike or a run here can't do that initially <laughs> whether you get a puppy or whether you rescue a dog it's not possible because they don't know their environment well enough 
for you to be able to do that. Now we live in Chester, <laughs> we live right by the meadows and at the moment what we're looking for is to train her to stop trying to escape onto the meadows because at the moment if she goes she won't know where she is, she doesn't know the environment yet. So we're still walking her in the garden primarily on her lead to show her so that she gets used to where she lives, the sights, the smells, the sounds of all of that. It's, um, it's fun, it's um, time consuming, but I know that six months from now, maybe less, she's very bright, she's very quick, she's very curious, that we are gonna have a pet, that we're gonna have lots of years of fun with, um, yeah, and we're gonna, we are gonna benefit as much as she is. So um, I love talking about her, she's just amazing. And I'll come back and after this next song and this break and actually talk about how we are playing with her indoors. Um, she does require quite a lot of stimulation at the minute. So stay tuned. I'm Denise Oliver. This is Empowerment Hour. We're talking about pets and their anxiety, our anxiety, and how we can help each other. Hi there, welcome back. This is Empowerment Hour. I'm Denise Oliver. You're listening to Callan FM. And um, I'm talking about pets and how they can help us with uh, stress, anxiety, depression. I'm not saying that um, these pets are for everyone. Um, but since we got our rescue dog, Jessie, um, she's really creating something very different as an atmosphere in the house. We are losing weight because <laughs> we no longer sit at the coffee table with crisps and snacks watching TV. No, it's about being around her. And if we left them out right now, she would just gorge on them because she hasn't been trained to, um, to not eat our food. She will eat anything. So we, um, yeah, we're, we're enjoying it in many ways. And I'm looking forward to the day when we can safely take her on long walks, on a lead, off a lead, however that works. And it takes time. It does take time. She's not just come here and, and be the perfect pet. We've had, um, she has peed in the house, um, that sort of thing. And we know that it's a stress response. We're getting used to things that stress her. Um, so if she doesn't get to have her alone time, she gets stressed. She needs to have her space just like we do. Um, what was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah. So I said that I would talk about how we're playing games with her. And my daughter's very, very inventive. She's great. She's bought all sorts of toys for her. But we realised or she recognised very quickly that this dog probably hadn't had pet toys like we see like you can buy in the shops um, and it's taken her like three going into four weeks now to know that that the pet that you know that her toys are things that she can play with that they're there for her to have fun with and she didn't get this she didn't she obviously never had one before so instead of that a paper bag has been amazing. A paper bag with tiny bits of treat in the bottom, but then full of paper, so that Jessie has to rustle through everything and really get to the, literally get to the bottom of the bag. And yesterday she had this very large back paper bag, and um, she burst through it, and it looked like she was I don't know she looked like she was the present coming out of the bag. So just watching her do that, I can feel my mood lifting. What else have we got? Um, big egg trays, so no eggs in them, but with a tiny bit of dog peanut butter in there, um, she scrabbles around. So you've got the egg box, so where the eggs were, tiny bit of peanut butter, only in two or three of, of the uh, container bits, full of paper then, and then she scrabbles through all of the paper, whipping it up and just making a paper mess on the floor, uh, which gets cleaned at the end of the day, because um, we have a log burning uh, fire. So all the paper, shredded paper goes on the fire 
and Evie jokes that all the sort of paper that gets left on the floor is Jessie's artwork and the artwork when it goes in the fire is going in the gallery <laughs> and we just start it all again the next day and something else that Evie found for her that really does help her with her with Jessie's stress is a snuffle bag I've never seen anything like it before it's um it's like the size of a small round cushion and it's got lots of felt bits that stand up inside it and it's got a drawstring around the neck of it and we pop tiny bits of treat in this and she has to go snuffling through this bag to get at the treats and it takes her ages because we can tie it really tightly and the more she um the more she pours at it and puts her head into it, the more it loosens. So eventually she does get all the treats that are in there. That she loves, she takes that to her bed and puts that in her bed with her. Um, other things that um, I never knew existed. Um, well, I knew they existed, but I didn't realize that dogs would like them. Um, things like antler horns. When she first came, the antler horn was her stress relief. She would gnaw and gnaw and gnaw on it. She's less bothered by things like that now, uh, but they're there. She requires them for her to chew on. The other thing she's got is a buffalo horn. Well, never realized that this was a thing that, you know, when these animals died, these buffalo horns became available for dogs to have as treats. And then someone else suggested pig's ears. I mean, not, none of this fills me with any sort of delight but it's fun for the dog. And that's what I've had to come to realize is I have these expectations of what I think a dog should have. I'm not a dog. The dog is the dog. The dog knows what she likes. The dog knows what is fun for her. So we've been getting inventive with paper bags, with old egg trays, all sorts of things like that in order to help our dog and help her hormone levels her playful ones, her happy hormones that then help calm and relax us as well. Um, there's an awful lot of, of research gone into the benefits of having a pet. And um, perhaps um, a dog isn't the right pet for you. So let's take another break now. And after the break, I'll come back and give you the name of a website that I've come across um, that's given me so much information about alternative pets. And so I'm, uh, we're gonna take a break. And then when we get back, I'll talk about alternative pets and what might work for you. Hi there, welcome back. This is Empowerment Tower. I'm Denise Oliver. Um, we're at Callan FM today. Well, I'm not in person because of lockdown situations here, there and everywhere. Um, and today I'm talking about pets, their benefits and, um, you know, for them, the benefits for them of having you as their person and the benefits to you of having them in your world. Now, um, I'm talking about dogs in particular because we just rescued Jessie and um, she's just delightful. She's barking her head off at the moment as I do this recording. She's outside, she's meeting uh, Ian who comes to help us with our garden. Our garden's huge. So having a dog for us, we've got a big house, big garden. So it's great to have that, you know, we love the garden, the dog loves the garden, even though she's constantly burrowing under the hedges to get into anywhere else but ours. We, think that our you know our garden was big enough for her um if you don't have that what else could you have what sort of other pets could you get that would be of a benefit to you um cats and dogs are our tend to be our go-to when we think about pets and there's other pets that you can get as well i know when my kids were little how much um we had one rabbit um, she lived a year. We had a guinea pig who was called Pretzel, who lived for three years. Pretzel lived. Um, I tended to have to do all the cleaning. That's the other thing. If you've got kids, then they tend to want to give up very quickly on the cleaning, but only have the pet to pet it. Um, that's fine. I knew that was the case and I went ahead anyway. Um, other things, other pets that are recommended. So rabbits I've just mentioned. They can be um, a great family pet, nowhere near as high maintenance as a dog or a cat, 
but they do have their personalities. All, all pets have their personalities. A rabbit doesn't require a lot of space. It depends on the size of the rabbit, I guess. So you'd have to make sure the hutch was the right size. Um, but again, owning a rabbit because you can pet them, you can stroke them can really reduce the um, stress hormones, cortisol, and increase your serotonin levels. So petting and snuggling your choice of um, pet can really help lower your blood pressure, lower your heart rate, and just bring that sense of ease to your body. Um, so other pets that uh, other people have, I talked about fish and how, why fish tanks are in doctor surgeries, dentist surgeries because they watching watching a fish tank full of fish watching their movements it's been scientifically proven to reduce stress and calm your heart rate now i'm not a fish lover i don't want to be cleaning out fish tanks that doesn't work for me so just know you would that work for you would you enjoy that other pets birds i've got a friend who has a parrot and he adores his parrot. And he spends so much time with this parrot. And she's a stunning color. She's like pale blue, amazing, amazing color. But the things with birds like parrots is they can live a very, very long time. She has an enormous cage that she lives in. Um, Mario is teaching her to say occasional words. They don't let her fly, I have to be honest. And part of me is a bit like, mm, I think, birds should be allowed to fly but people who like them people who um want the pet that they can have in a smaller space well that's great if that works for you um birds encourage you to have some sort of social interaction you can talk to your bird you can feed your bird you know, that sort of thing um and talking and teaching your bird tricks can often help um, your health and theirs as well. And then what else? Well, what about snakes <laughs> or lizards? Again, wouldn't work for me. But apparently lizards and snakes become very attached to their owners. And, um, and they recognise who the person is who's caring for them, who feeds them, just like a dog or a cat does. Um, and some of them know, have certain mannerisms that show you when they want to be petted. And things like snakes, lizards, you know, animals of that ilk, if you have um, allergies to pet fur, then they could be the, the, the thing that work for you. Wouldn't work for me. Um, I just know that. And you have to know you and you have to work out what would work for you if you're with a family, what would work for your family? Um, and you've got to consider things like how long you're at home for during the day. It's okay with us, with Jessie, because there's always someone at home. There's four of us living in this house at the moment, and there's always one of us here to be with her. She's never on her own. Even though she chooses to go off and be on her own, <clears throat> she's never left alone. And so if you're someone who would like a dog, but you're going out to work a lot, what happens to your dog then? You have to work out how it's going to work for you. I'm not here to tell you a right or wrong thing. I'm just saying that there's alternatives. So um, what else could we talk about? We could talk about all sorts of things to do with pets. And um, I'll come back and let's just look at finding um, a pet that works for your lifestyle. Let's finish on that today. Hi there and welcome back to the final session of Empowerment Hour for today. Um, thanks everyone to, for tuning into Callan FM. We really appreciate you doing that. Um, and yeah, we're in strange times still. Weird things are happening and you may have considered um, getting a pet and we realised uh, quite late on into this year that actually I wonder if now is the time for us as a family to have a pet. She is my daughter. Uh, we did get a pet. Let me not just dive in too quickly. Um, she's called Jessie. She's a dog. She's a rescue dog from Romania. Um, and she's actually my daughter's dog. So once my daughter 
gets back into full-time employment and moves out again, then Jessie will go with her. Um, she's a good sized dog. She's not too big. I had stipulations around getting a dog. I didn't want puppies. I didn't want a big dog. And I didn't want a full out pedigree um, with the possibility of the uh, health issues that sometimes pedigrees come with. Um, she's a strong dog, the one we've got, very strong. She's very muscular. She's full of terrier. So she's constantly wanting to dig. We've got big holes in the lawn. Uh, if you have a wonderful garden, if you love your lawn, don't get a terrier. <laughs> and the one thing about her is that we're beginning to recognise is that she's always going to dig in some way, shape or form. And so we're just going to have to go with that. So what else about pets and um, suitability, you and them? You have to consider... My eldest son has wanted to get a dog for a long time, but him and his wife live in the tiniest of flats. It's so small that there's no room for a dog. There's barely room for them. So you have to consider where you live. Um, are you upstairs? Do you have um, space to exercise your pet? And if not, then perhaps you want one of the more sedentary type of pets. You know, a rabbit would work, um, a cat maybe. Um, it's more suitable than a dog or a fish tank um, you know something like that what's your work schedule like are you gone for most of the day um, I know we're in this corona style lifestyle at the moment but once um, work resumes as in nine to five or whether, whether you work shifts or something like that who would be responsible for that pet feeding it and walking it when you're if it's a dog or letting it out if it's a cat if you're not there um large breeds of dog for instance if you've only got a tiny yard or small flat is that fair is it fair on you is it fair on the animal and i think that's what i would look at there perhaps you're someone who um when everything gets back to whatever the new normal is, the new possibilities, perhaps you do a lot of travel. And although you love to come home to a pet at some point, who would look after that pet when you're traveling? Whatever that pet is. <coughs> now then, the one thing that we've um, looked at as well was we didn't want a very furry dog because we didn't, I personally didn't want a lot of um, shedding. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there are many different breeds of dog and cat and they're now being bred like the cockapoos and things like that so that shedding doesn't happen. Um, but then perhaps you're more into a reptile where there is no hair to shed. So choosing a pet for you, you have to be honest with you about your lifestyle and how that pet, if you're not around, would be taken care of. So Perhaps you could um, borrow someone's pet. Perhaps you fancied having a dog. Perhaps you start going on dog walks with that other person, socially distanced, if you're not from the same household, that sort of thing. Um, we, my daughter did that. She got together with her friends at the start of lockdown. And this is really where it came from. This, um, the point of us getting a dog was that most of her friends are in couples and they have a dog. So they would go on socially distanced dog walks uh, to areas that there was lots of space so that they wouldn't be around other people as well. The dog walking really did something for my daughter. She felt more relaxed um, having been outside in the fresh air rather than always indoors working. Um, and it did something for her mental health, her well-being and any anxiety she was experiencing. We have a long way to go with our Jessie. She still needs a lot of training. We need a lot of training. And I'll, every time I'm on the air, I'll give you an update as to where we're at. If, like us, um, you wanted to find out more about uh, the positive reinforcement dog behavioural training, then look up IMDT. Uh, and if you've been interested in doing dog training yourself, then perhaps IMDT would be a good place to start with their courses. So 
Thanks for listening today. Really appreciate each and every one of you who chooses to tune in. Apologies for all the weeks that got missed. Um, I just forgot what day it was, where I was, as we were getting used to having Jesse in the house with us. So um, I'll be back next week. I look forward to being with you again then. Stay tuned to Callan FM. There's lots more to come. Really love having your company. Stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.